Dog just took off like a jet. <laughs> right now, I wish I'd get another dog. <laughs> With cat or something. <laughs> America. Like cornbread and chili. Mmm, doggy. Damn, that's good. Ah, uh, this is Oscar Wilson. Mr. 43rd Street, Chicago, Illinois. And you listen to Blues America. in the music bed by today's special guest Lindsay Beaver. That's a really awesome track. And uh, we just heard the Blues People soundbite that features the voice of the late great Big Mama Thornton. She was obviously a great blues legend. But um, Lindsay, what does that term mean to you? How do you define the blues? Um, I, I get that question a lot and I never know how to answer it. Um, for me, it's, it's, if you're asking what the genre of it is, I, I would, you know, I would say it was the originators, you know, the guys like, you know, Sonny Boy or, you know, like the real early originators. If we're talking what blues is, that, that to me is the, the birth of it, you know, like, but even before Muddy, before anything was amplified, before, like, there's your, there's your beginning. I think with any kind of music, it's going to change and it's going to grow. Um, and I, I think that it's important to keep the tradition like the, the grooves especially like you gotta have a shuffle you gotta have a you know something that harkens back to that but for me that would be what it is to me those guys with a guitar you know that it's you know it changes everything well cool uh you know when we talk about the blues part of our tradition is covering blues standards that's been passed down by each generation yep and as a young artist, um, tell me about your style in regards to making blues standards sound like your own version. How do you do that? I'm still trying to figure that out. Like I said, I mentioned Sean earlier. Like I, he was able to take those Memphis Bull tunes, and and they're totally different when he did them in the trio. I, I think I'm doing a decent job of that, but I think I really do try to play like what I hear, like with the little Willie John thing. I try to keep it pretty pretty close to that. But at the end of the day, I don't. I'm not that guy, you know. So it's going to end up being the way it does with me. I, I guess I kind of fall into that by accident. I also try to pick songs that not everyone does, with the exception of "Got Love." If you want, I suppose that's been done a lot. But uh, the covers, there's so many great songs out there, and and I just I don't particularly care for doing the same ones that we all cover, you know. Um. When I got to know Jimmy a little bit, you know, his ballads and favorites records are so cool. And there again, there's not a lot of the usual on those, you know, and, and he's really good at finding these cool songs, you know, or like even the, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, too, when they put Girls Go Wild out, 
you know, or, or the, the second one, um, well, I have all of them, but like, they're, they're really good at that, too, just finding covers that, that weren't widely known, you know. And I think when you do that, they can become widely known because you're playing them. Maybe somebody go, oh, that's cool, and they'll do it, and it builds a, a wider repertoire. Well, we really haven't mentioned the fact that you're a young performer in a genre that's typically uh, dominated by older seasoned players. Um, <laughs> that stated, um, how does uh, the blues translate with the next generation of listeners? I think it's it's timeless. You know, I, I think this it's funny because we talk about you know it's retro or throwback or blues is it old music. I think it's timeless. I. I did a show last night with a, and there was a band that opened for me. They did some really kind of cool, soul, bluesy stuff. She was 24, the front, the front person. And so she's 10 years younger than me. And she's listened to all the same stuff. She loves it, you know, and loves the kind of stuff. But she goes, you know, I wish, I wish this wasn't such a niche these days. And I said, I said the same thing. And that's, that's what I think so interesting about this music is it really is not specific to an age or even a group of people. We think it is, but honestly, you walk in and you see the 24-year-old playing her butt off, you know, and the whole band was around her age, and you go, well, it's uh, it's, it's timeless. And that, that's indicative of really legitimately heartbreaking or, you know, moving music is going to do that. And, and blues is at, at its core is about storytelling and about, about somebody's heartache or life or, or story, you know? And I think that is, that, that's what I love about it, you know? All right. Well, Lindsay Beaver, congratulations on this great new album and all of your success. Be safe on the road and have fun. And I hope to see you out there soon. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. For the listeners, the Way Way Back Blues with Sippy Wallace is coming up next. is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. I'm John Primer. And I'm Bob Cortor. You listen to Blues America. What we're going to do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. It's time to go back, baby. Way, way back. This is the Way, Way Back Blues. And me, she so hot to be for the folk to eat with their dancing all night long. They did a loot on horn, bank riding forms a beat to all that bunch. They said, Boom, liquor. So she said, If you drink a spoonful, it will kill you dead. Down at that house rent party Each and everybody Got full of gin and corn And folks they had their habits on Big business bugs are bootleggers And bigger business bugs beyond the takers Child raise up Jim. Jim got mad and dry shaved him. Down at that color song, Jamila. One 
girl says, I am only yes, but I can still take a heel down, shifting my girl. The music was furnished by Fiddle and Joe. He fiddled so much till he broke his bow. The dance lasted till broad daylight. Then closed with a free for all fight. Down at that color social the Way Way Back Blues with a pre-war blues legend, Sippy Wallace. Parlor Social Day Lou, that's cut in 1925 on OK Records, which is where she cut her first 40 songs. Maybe you've heard a few of the people she's worked with, like King Oliver, Sidney Bechet, and Louis Armstrong. <laughs> During the uh, Depression, she gave up show business to focus on the church, but then she came out of retirement in the late 60s to continue a strong career that included an album with Louis Armstrong and a Grammy-nominated release for Atlantic Records in 1982. She continued to perform music until her death at the age of 88. Her music is required for any serious blues fans. But this is where the blues talks, a little program recorded weekly at the Chico Chisholm Memorial Studio in Phoenix. I've been your host, Drew Verbis. I'd like to thank my wonderful guest, the great Lindsay Beaver. And as always, links to today's special guests is posted at our website, bluesamerica.com. With thanks to all the fine community radio stations for supporting the blues, and all of you who are listening, be a patriot and support Blues America. Bye. Promotional consideration for Blues America is provided by the Southwest Musical Arts Foundation, the Phoenix Blues Society, Record High Vinyl, the Rhythm Room Concert Club, Mojo Hand Blues Art Apparel, and the listeners of Public Radio.